Hi there, welcome to Sarge Notes. My name is Paul Sargent, and today in our government class, we're going to take a look at the Congress. All right, we're going to introduce the idea of Congress, where it came from, and what exactly uh, it's made up of. So to start off, I just want to remind you of sort of the big overall picture of how the American government was set up to work. Um, and I'm going to go over this when we study the presidency. I'm going to go over this when we study the court system. This is going to be something we're going to push and push and push and push because I absolutely want to make sure you get this. Now the idea for the American government is that you would have three branches of government that would make the whole thing up. And the idea is, from the founding father's standpoint, that if you, if you divide power three ways, then no one group can get way too much power. They were really scared of having another king that was going to take over all of the power. And they really had figured out with the Articles of Confederation that giving all of the power to the states wasn't good either. And so they were looking for some kind of a compromise. If you recall, when we talked about the, the Constitutional Convention, there were two ideas out there. One that gave more power to big states, one that gave more power to small states, and they decided to compromise. So the three branches of government were created like this. You would have one branch, which is the executive branch. This is, of course, the President of the United States and all of the bureaucracy that works for him. Um, and their idea, or their job, is to enforce the laws. You also then have the legislative branch, whose, whose job in the whole system is to make the laws. And then you have the judicial branch. And the judicial branch's uh, job is to interpret the laws. Between those three, you have all the different powers that a government can enact. And with the way it's set up, each one of these cannot only check a power of the other one. In other words, if one branch tries to do something, other branches have ways of stopping it from doing it. But they also have ways of balancing power between all three. So we're going to make sure that none of these three branches of government has too much power. And that's really the very basic idea here. The general flow of the system is like this. We want our legislature to make laws. And they're going to be enforced by the executive branch. They're going to carry them out. They're going to make them actually happen. We know that laws without enforcement mean nothing. And then those, that enforcement of the laws is going to have to be fought out sometimes in the court system. Because it makes a, it makes a difference on how laws are enforced. And they're going to interpret them and decide what the laws really mean. Now the checks and balances we've already done. So we're going to move on from this and, and move on to exactly what this branch, the legislative branch is. That's what we're going to be working on for the next few sessions. All right, so how does all this work? Well, the idea behind Congress is an idea known as bicameralism. It's a very fancy word derived from Latin, which means two houses. And the idea is under a bicameral system, the power of Congress is going to be divided into two distinct houses. On one side, you have the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives is considered to be the lower house. There are a lot more representatives. Um, each representative covers a smaller territory, except in certain states that only have one representative. Um, and population is the basis for how we determine the number of representatives for each, uh, for each state. The other side of it is the Senate, which is going to be comprised of two people from each uh, state, and it's going to give an equal say for states no matter their size. Now the idea of bicameralism was nothing new when the Founding Fathers came about it. In fact, why they ended up with this is really pretty simple. Number one, you have to understand that this was already being done. 
Under the British system, Parliament was divided into two houses. There's a House of Lords and a House of Commons. Um, every colonial legislature was divided into two houses. Um, all of this was set up so that they were very familiar with this system. So a bicameral system was pretty, pretty good. But the biggest reason why this was done was because of a thing called the Great Compromise. Now, if you think back to our discussion of the Constitutional Convention, there were two systems that were proposed. One, proposed by Virginia, gave power based on population. Those, those states which had more people would get more votes. The other, set up by the state of New Jersey, was set up by a state representation, whereas every state would get the same number of representatives. Well, the small states wanted to have their represent, representation. The large states wanted to have more representation because they had more people. And so they really hit an impasse. Like they could not decide one way or the other. And so under the Great Compromise, they said, we don't have to decide. We're going to make a compromise here that says, let's just do both. And so your House of Representatives is based on population, and your Senate is equal representation to senators for every single state. Now, this is going to make things pretty complicated. Because in order for laws to be made, and we'll get to this in future videos, laws have to go through both houses of Congress in order to be passed onto the president and be turned into a law. Finally, for this section, we have to talk about how Congress meets. Okay? There are just a couple of terms here, and quite honestly, your textbook, and for those of you who don't know me or take me, these videos are designed to go along with the Magruder's American Government textbook. Your textbook spends a lot of time talking about uh, some, some terms and some concepts and some practices that, quite honestly, you're never going to need to know about. Um, and so I'm going to simplify this as much as I possibly can. Every Congress is called a term, okay? And the term uh, refers to a two-year period of time for which each Congress sits. It's two years. And in fact, as this video is being recorded, just yesterday, the 114th Congress, starting being numbered from the, from the first one that sat after the Constitution, uh, was just sworn in. So we're at the 114th two-year term of Congress. Each term is divided into two sessions, and a session is one year. All right, now there's a whole lot of stuff in your textbook uh, about all kinds of other things. You don't need to know these things, at least for my class. We're talking about terms, we're talking about two years, and we're talking about sessions, we're talking about uh, one year. And so you, you might be watching the news and see someone referred to as a five-term congressman. That would mean that they're serving somewhere around 10 years uh, in the Congress, okay? That are, th those are the basic concepts that are covered in section one of this chapter. Um, in the next video, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about what's in section two, the House of Representatives, and look at how it's set up and how it works and how it's different from the Senate. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.